So I have connected my pieces. As you can see, I've gone in and again, anytime we're on a curve, we wanna make sure we get in those slashes, especially in the middle of this sweetheart neckline. You wanna make sure you get pretty deep, but not so deep that you're messing into the seam, but you wanna make sure you get deep enough so that it curves very nicely when you flip it over. Now, before I flip this over, I just wanted to go into, I have an actual video that I cover much more in detail, applying cups inside of a dress. Now, usually when you put boning inside of a dress, sometimes you don't need to put cups. Cups are like optional. I think they add additional structure and beauty to a bodice. So I usually put cups inside of my garments. But if you find that there's enough structure and support without the cups, then you don't have to add them. I just had these laying around. These may or may not be the best cups for this dress, but I just had them laying around. I just wanted to show you guys you know, the added bonus of having cups inside of your dress. So if I turn this around, Okay, so I'm going in and I'm just turning my bodice around. This still needs to be pressed, but I just wanted to show you really quickly the difference adding cups inside of a dress can make. So again, this has to be pressed and put together a little bit better. But, so this is my bodice all by itself. So it's coming together very nicely. I, I see I have a nice solid bodice, but it's still a little, a little flat. So if I add the cups to the dress, I'm getting instant curve. So this dress, the best made garments are those that have that uh, structure in it. So it's almost like um, the dress is sort of like built in itself. And I always say the best dresses are the ones that can offer a woman support so that she doesn't have to wear tons of undergarments and things like that. So if I can get her a good solid um, pair of cups so that she doesn't have to wear a bra, if I can put stays and boning in the dress, you wanna make it so the woman or the wearer of the dress doesn't have to wear tons of additional supportive garments in order for this to look properly. So if you can see, this is kind of what it looks like. So cup insertions are, insertions are fairly easy. You just figure out how the cup should go in the dress. Okay. You want to make sure that they are nice and even, even and symmetrical inside the dress. And then you're only going to tack down certain parts. So I'm not going to sew all around. I'm just going to take a pin and pin the very corners. Ideally, you wanna go for cups that match the dress. I just had these laying around, like I said, so I just use these. So I'm just going to do um, pin pricks at the very corner here, at the edge here, and right here. And they're just simple ta tacks that you make inside of the dress. And ideally you don't want it to show on the lining side, but it's okay because the lining again is going inside of the dress. So it's not too terrible if you can see it inside the dress. So what you do to one side of the dress, you do to the other side of the dress. So we have our cups in place and now we can really start to see how our bodice came together. And now, now we can go and roll everything over. We have that nice, beautiful curve, the smooth flatness. Now this is when pressing your garment really becomes your friend because how well this this part is pressed is going to really show the beauty of the uh, bodice. So you're going to go in and you're going to press everything out. All right, so I've gone in and I pressed my bodice for the most part it's pressed quite nicely at the end. I normally steam a garment in its entirety because there's just certain grooves that the iron doesn't really complement. 
So now I'm gonna go in and show you guys how we're gonna use our prick stitch to finish off the top of our bodice. So I'm gonna go in and just to show you guys what it looks like on the opposite side, here we have our lining portion and our main fabric portion with interfacing attached. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna push my seam towards the lining. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. I'm gonna take all my seams, this top seam and push towards the lining. Why? Because you want that stitch that you're gonna create, that prick stitch, you want it to be anchored here so that when you're folding it down, the top of the lining doesn't like protrude up. So if this is not anchored properly, then it's gonna, when you put on the dress and when you're wearing the dress, you're gonna see where the lining is constantly gonna be showing in front of the main fabric. That's not what you want. So you're gonna do that through the, the whole top of the bodice. You're gonna go in and you're just gonna pin everything down. Once you have it pinned down, it's really not usually any particular need to baste. You have your needle thread. And I usually use just the one single thread and just kind of have the rest hanging. You can tie a knot at the edge if you like. If not, that's fine. You can also do a back stitch. So I'm gonna go in past that zipper point because the zipper is gonna cover all this. And I'm just gonna stab stitch. And do a really quick back stitch. That way I know. That's only because I didn't decide to tie a knot. If you tie a knot, you should be good. So remember the prick stitch. The prick stitch just requires us to go in Take the needle out so it's better to see. So the prick stitch, we're going in to that uh, mark that we made or that stitch that we made. We go into the fabric, we go behind it. We pull through. And then we just take a little bit of a step back, a tiny one. And then we go in again and pull through. It's harder to see in the black on black fabric. If you do go to the tutorial that I have for couture techniques, it shows you exactly how to do this. But yeah, so I'm basically, here's my thread that I came out from. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a stitch behind a tiny one, just a, a prick. And then I'm going to come out. And these stitches can be as close together, as far apart as you like. I usually make mine about a half inch. You can use that seam gauge if, you, if you're really not comfortable yet with eyeballing your stitches. And again, what this stitch does is you can go in and machine stitch this. So you can go in and you can base this entire thing. You can machine stitch it and see what it looks like. But because it's so inconspicuous, these prick marks it just looks a lot more high-end a lot more better made for your garment and anyone that has a, a any tiny bit of an eye for fashion will see the difference that hand stitching makes versus machine stitching do you get to the same results absolutely if you machine stitch this at the top you would essentially get the same results as you would if you prick stitch it but if we're talking about couture techniques we want to um, eliminate machine stitching as much as possible and really just focus on hand stitching. So we're gonna do that for the entirety of the top of the bodice. So you're gonna go in and do this technique for the entire top of the bodice. And then we're just going to survey our bodice and see how everything looks when we uh, put it together. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.